your trading questions. Yes, we are taking questions, so send them on in. Here to tackle all this, Guy Adami, Tim Seymour, and Karen Feinemann. We'll be diving into the recent surge in Tesla. The company has added $50 billion in market cap. That's two Ford Motors since just the start of this month. Is there any limit to where this stock can go? But first, quick check on the markets here, how we ended the day on Wall Street. Stocks tumbling today, with the Dow dropping nearly 400 points. S&P 500 snapping a five-day win streak. Banks were under pressure. Boeing was the biggest drag on the Dow. So what were the day traders buying and selling today's market slide? Let's get to Leslie Picker with the leaderboard. Leslie. Hey, Melissa, no surprise here. Tesla topping the charts with a net increase of 18,700 accounts holding Tesla stock on the Robinhood platform today. Another electric vehicle manufacturer, Nina, popped up in the top five. Third and fourth place were Sunrun and Vivint Solar, which announced a more than $3 billion deal today. Those two compete with Tesla in the solar products industry. Now, Novavax actually saw the second highest number of accounts purchasing its stock on the Robinhood platform. The biotech company announced today that it was awarded a $1.6 billion deal with the U.S. government uh, to fast track its COVID vaccine candidate. Over the last week, though, electric vehicles really in focus here with Tesla, Neo, Plug Power, and Solo seeing a combined net increase of nearly 200,000 accounts purchasing shares through Robinhood, Melissa. All right, Leslie, thank you. Leslie Picker with the leaderboard. Uh, Tim Seymour, what do you think uh, these names tell you about the overall markets? Well, they, they certainly print profit. I, you know, the retail investors and traders don't want to hear us, uh, you know, poo-pooing some of these moves. People are making a lot of money uh, in some of these names. Uh, the, the, the look at solar, for example, this, this has been some run by some run. And, and, if, you, and if you look at uh, some of the trends that are born out of COVID and some of the trends that are born out of just, uh, you know, better kind of global ecological awareness, this is a, a trend that uh, at times looks very, very interesting. And at times uh, the costs around solar and the ability to actually have uh, feasibility, feasible infrastructure, we've seen this trade before. Um, the, the trade on Tesla, uh, you know, the new slow deliveries slightly better than expected, but still down relative to uh, the plus 500,000 or more that, that at least have been advertised. This has been a story about liquidity. It's been a story about uh, China getting back to you know, production faster, Fremont getting back to production faster. Um, and and you know, the common thread with all of these, and as you get into vaccines and uh, Novavax, I mean, these are, these are valuations that are impossible to quantify. These are momentum names. These are names that, that come when people have pushed out the risk curve uh, and when people are actually looking at liquidity across markets. So, Difficult for me to find fundamental merit in any of these big moves. Um, solar is the one thematic that I think makes a lot of sense. All right, let's get to us straight to the stock lighting up your screens. Tim had mentioned that Tesla, an explosive run there. The EV maker up more than 40% in the past five sessions. It is now bigger than 97% of the S&P 500. In fact, NEP Electric has been on fire. Well, as he mentioned, some of these names as, as topping the leaderboard, Neo, Nikola, Plug, Workhorse, all soaring in the past month. Let's bring back Luke Ventures founder and Fast Money friend, Gene Munster. Gene, great to have you with us. Um, Thank you. Froth, momentum, you know, these are some of the words that could be associated with this run in Tesla. Could there be a fundamental story here? I mean, if you take a look, at the EV space, there is a scarcity of names. There's a scarcity value, isn't there, in Tesla? And while its competitors are paring back on R&D when it comes to EVs, isn't that to Tesla's benefit? Uh, there is a scarcity value, and particularly, even though the other automotive companies have EVs, they're really not making an impact on the market share. It's a very clear decision for consumers. Tesla has about 80% market share we can also fast forward to five or 10 years from now, and there will be much, many more electric cars, about 3% of total cars sold globally today are electric, but undoubtedly that number will go to 100% at some point in the future. It's just simply a better way to move around, and Tesla has an advantage. And I think when you look at Tesla's current $260 billion market cap, look at it relative to the rest of the auto industry, it's hard to fathom why it can go higher. But I think that the uh, perspective about this as a growth company, take away the uh, previous view of this as an auto company and look at this as a perspective of what the potential growth rate is, the scarcity value. This company can grow at 30 or 40% for the next five plus years. If it grows at 40% for the next five years, that's 200 billion in revenue. 
and that would imply at a 20% operating margin, which with their software, they presumably could get there, much more than any auto company, so there's not a paradigm, uh, an analog there. But that's uh, 40 billion in operating income, and you can uh, start to scale together a multiple on that, that uh, you could build a case that this name can go much higher. I do caution, it is gonna be a roller coaster. There's a lot of traders in and out of this name, but I think that long-term, uh, the, the scarcity value, and more importantly, the advantage that they have on the other automotive companies is still underappreciated in Tesla's valuation today. So Gene and Scott, thanks for being here again. So this is more a thematic question. Adam Jonas, Morgan Stanley, I think he's a wonderful analyst. I'm sure you know him. Do analysts get squeezed from time to time? Obviously traders do, we've seen that in the move to the upside in Tesla. Adam Jonas raises price target today, I think the 740 bull case, 2070. Is that a phenomenon that takes place? And if so, are we seeing it manifest itself in Tesla right now? There can be some of that. Being an analyst is a, a difficult job. Uh, I can speak from personal experience there. Uh, maybe just about some of uh, the comments, his comments today related to that, that Tesla will burn a billion dollars in cash in the June quarter. Uh, I am. Uh, I would just point out that there are, uh, there's about uh, 8,200 uh, cars that were made in the March quarter that will be delivered in the June quarter. That's positive for free cash flow. And they had a lot of materials that were uh, purchased in the March quarter that ultimately weren't used until the June quarter. So they didn't have to buy as much materials in the June quarter. My sense is that they will be free cash flow positive in the June quarter. I realize that that is outsized. I, what I think it speaks to is the Tesla story is complicated because of all the legacy uh, muscle memory around this being an auto company, but also the mechanics of some of the things we just talked about about trying to understand and uh, trying to grapple free cash flow. And so, uh, yes, it uh, can be, uh, uh, being a sales analyst is, is, is difficult, but I think in this case, um, the analysts that are kind of holding on to price targets that are much lower, uh, they may get a break and the stock may fall uh, for some time back to that, but I think that the long-term undeniable truth here is that cars are gonna be electric in the future and it is difficult for other automotive companies to catch up. Gene, it's Karen. Thanks for being here for the second hour of Fast Money. Question for you: Do you know what? How do you think about the autonomous driving, the taxi business for Tesla? We don't put uh, much into it today. Ultimately, uh, we believe that uh, EVs, uh, autonomous vehicles, are also going to be an important part of the future, and that Tesla will have a role in that. And so, when we think about Tesla's play initially. Uh, Tesla owners probably aren't going to want to open their cars up uh, to some sort of a ride-sharing network. Uh, this isn't typical of a, a Tesla owner. But what we do think will happen is that uh, we could see the company help finance uh, third parties that basically think of mom-and-pop businesses that own 10, 15 Teslas that uh, uh, insert them into Tesla's network. So they're effectively uh, participating in building that. When you put it together, Karen, I think that Tesla will have a play in robo-taxis. Uh, I don't think about that in that uh, growth rate number that I had for 30 to 40% for the next five years. But I think that that part of the story is real, uh, despite the debate uh, around it. Gene, good to see you. Thank you. For the second time, Gene Munster, Luke Ventures. Um, Guy, I thought your point was interesting. I mean, we had JP Morgan raise its price target yesterday to $295, right? We had uh, yeah. a new, we had the, the bull case from Morgan Stanley today uh, from Adam Jonas uh, with the stock in the 2000s. Wedbush is at 2000. Um, I mean, the animals are all over the place, and that seems like that could be yeah. an opportunity for traders. It could be opportunity. I mean, it's it's been obviously perilous for a lot of people. I mean, we've had it done a good job, done a bad job. I can speak from personal uh, history with Tesla, but I'll say this, and I've, I've said this now for a while. I go back to the Joe Kernan interview at Davos with President Trump. Um, that was a turning point for the stock, without question, in terms of some of the answers he gave. I think the stock was trading around 300 then, and then I go to May when the stock was trading 700. I think at the time. You know, after a huge move to the upside, when Elon Musk tweeted out that his stock was too expensive, I'm paraphrasing, that sell-off lasted about a day, and this, you see where the stock is today. So 
impervious to bad news. You stay the course. Uh, I, and it pains me to say it, but that's been the right method of trading the stock now for quite some time. I mean, Tim, I know that for Tesla, you have been against the stock on valuation and for many other reasons over the course of time. But I mean, in terms of the scarcity value, if you want to participate in the EV revolution, call it that if you're a bull on this, there aren't too many places to go. Yeah. We showed you a screen of all the companies benefiting from this sort of trend. The NEOs, the Nikolas, the Plug Power, and, and Tesla is perhaps the best capitalized of the bunch. Yeah, look, the scarcity value makes a lot of sense. It was actually kind of refreshing to hear Gene talk about the, the upside and defend the valuation that was purely based upon it being a car company, though, um, because that's rare. It's, it's usually an opportunity for people to talk about data and technology. Um, but, but yes, the scarcity value of, of EV is there. I, I do believe uh, competitors are able to close the gap. Maybe Tesla has a huge head start. They're not going to be anywhere near the market share that they are today. But, but you, know, you still have to get back to some issues about uh, the, the free cash flow or lack thereof of the company, their ability to make these cars profitably, which I think is still uh, in question. I, I think a lot of this move is, is, is mania. I think a lot of this move is not based in fundamentals. Um, the, the short interest has gone from 25% in May of 2019, roughly, to about, you know, seven and a half. So, no question, painful, painful, painful run, a lot of short squeezes out there, um, and, and news flow that for the last three quarters has been pretty good. In fact, uh, I believe if they can get the U.S. gap profitability for another quarter, that gets them, uh, you know, into some of the S&P indices that's, mm -hmm. that would also bring, bring more liquidity. So. Um, I, just very difficult rationalization on, on valuation ever. Um, good technology, if not great technology, um, that has had a lot of issues on, on operations. So, um, but it's, it's been an extraordinary run. There's no disputing that, and, and certainly uh, uh, I acknowledge that. I, I have uh, an idea, Karen, that uh, you cannot get behind a valuation on any measure, but at least with interest rates remaining this low, if you are a believer in future growth that Tesla embodies, can you make more of a case being in names like a Tesla? Well, you certainly can if you compare. See, I don't want to get in trouble to would my rather my would I rather myself, but I have to because I'm looking at something like a Nikola. I can't get behind that in any metric of negative interest rates, or I, I, I can't even come up with some. It just doesn't compute. You can get there on Tesla, right? They have a real product, they make it, they're whatever, 97,000 cars, whatever it is, right? There's something real there. That's sort of, so Nikola is a very different story than having something real there. Um, but if you have to be in the space, and, and look, remember, we used to talk not that long ago about severe financing problems for yeah. Tesla. And that is gone right now. That risk is absolutely gone. So, in that, if, if if, if I had to choose one, definitely test it. All right. Total Request Fast Money is just getting started. Up next, we're breaking down the action surrounding one of the hottest stocks of day traders today.